Next up, we've got Outfit 7, who are going to be doing our second superstar session of the morning, morning here in the UK and Europe. Um, and they're going to be talking about breathing, li breathing life into a new IP, uh, valuable le uh, lessons in rethinking what you think you know about your game. Wait for it. We've got the video coming. Hi, hey. Hey. hey! Now, the reason I haven't said you know, how do I pronounce your name? I want to get it right. Your name. Your name. Well, hi, your name. How, how are you today? Are you well? Great just waiting to jump in i was just listening that the last part of the previous session it was like wow these guys are yeah. tough with the questions <laughs> no it was really good and yeah and you you are our second superstar session so we're all here excited uh, looking forward to this i think it's a really interesting topic about you know taking an ip and sort of revitalizing it and bringing it back so um yeah i'm really interested for this um I will let you, um, I know we're five minutes late, don't worry about that, we'll, we'll still have the time, and um, yeah, I'll let you share your screen, get yourself sorted, and while you do that, as you said, we had a lot of questions in the last one, please do keep those questions flowing, we've got the Q&A function there, so make use of that, make use of the chat as well, and uh, yes, we can see your talk, uh, it's just going full screen, there we go, um, so yeah, if you're ready, I'll drift off into the background, and uh, We'll let you uh, get on with this uh, fascinating talk. Cool. Thanks, Sophia. Um, so, hi, guys. Hi, actually, gang. This is how I, I usually uh, say hello at the beginning in our company. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about breathing life into the new IP. Um, but the first thing that I actually do today is um, I will try to guide you back in the time. I think that most of you has the driving lesson, at least for the bike, not talking about motorbike or car. But just uh, try to imagine yourself at your first driving lesson, where your instructor was there and what he was saying to you. So this is the car. This is your seat. Please adjust the seat. Here is the steering wheel. Now here is the engine. So keep, put it in, you turn it on. But oh, sorry, forget, you first need to fix the mirror. And then here you have the clutch, here you have the throttle go on and when you are listening to this trying to combine all those data points together you are already all sweating but you didn't even start driving you are still there sitting in the car and say okay no 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 but later on during the time what was happening you started to drive you did the first lesson the second lesson and you start forgetting about those things how to do it you didn't came to the car and say okay i need to do this i need to do that and that at the end, you just jump into the car, you hold, grab your steering wheel. The most important thing that you are thinking about is which, what kind of music I will put on, and that's it. And you start driving and you just go through it. And this is actually what is happening in our minds as, let's say, distributors, marketingers, and uh, also what is happening with the users. We are constantly bombarded with different tools, different approaches, different channels different part of puzzle that we need to just combine together um, not just combine them together we actually need to combine them in the right order and execute them but what is the final result we are just driving we are just selling distributing the games users are just going there seeing there is a cool game they are installed they install it and they start to play and that's it and what happened with us uh, now it's really easy to be a smart ass. Um, as Outfit7 and uh, owner of Talking Tom and French franchise, yes, we are getting in great numbers. We have more than 400 monthly active users. And right now saying, hey, we have the brand, we did it like this, we, we start compiling the things together, we're focusing on different things. Reality and the fact is, we're just simply at the right time, at the right place with the right product. And what we could do at that time, it was just, let's ride the wave. Tom is just flying up. There is Angela, my talking Angela flying out. And this could be actually the end of our today's sessions. You know how it could end? And they were all living happy till the end of the time. But that's not what the reality was. Um, because with this, it can be easily going into this effect of king of the hill. So you are there, you have the biggest market share there and you simply don't care. You are just waiting saying, hey, we have a really good product and that's it. Maybe we will release another product which is actually going to be the same, copycat the first one, 
and it's going to grow. So at the end, different gardens, different products that you are releasing out of it, a lot of kings of the hills, but nothing will happen. And again, next question that comes here is, and most probably many of you working in these fields, you heard it, do, you, do we actually need marketing in our company? What is this with distribution? Eh? What are those guys in 12th floor, in our case, are actually doing? Um, I think that you find it out many times. Um, but reality is that we wanted to do something big. And we find out that actually Talking Tom and his friends are working really well. We have a strong game. We have a huge amount of users in. But what is the next thing that we want to do there? We actually want to grow. And how to make grow something that is just a product? We need to bring something into it. So we, we saw that if we want to grow, if we want to keep users into our ecosystem, we want to bring, bring in the characters. We, want, we need to bring them in the personality. And yeah, it might sound like a retail store. So when you have A users, customers come in, here you have the loyalty card, um, stay with us, you will get this bonus, you will get that bonus. But really, in reality, it's like that. If you want to create a brand, it's not enough just that you release a best product out there. You need to pack it, wrap it in the right way. And at that time, we started to think actually, do we have just my talking Tom? Do we have my talking Angela? Or it's better to think about, hey, we have Tom, we have Angela, there is Hank. These are actually gang, gang of guys and those girls together. They're living their own life. They're living their own life into the garage. So how to pack and sell this to the final users? Um, how to do it? We started to creating the entire ecosystem. The entire company was not talking about, let's create a new game, but how will this new products, new thing that we are working on will fit into the ecosystem that where we are living in, where our characters are living in. So we start bringing awareness. We start bombarding them from different channels. So Tom that was present in my talking Tom was actually the same character that was also living his own life into the animated series out there on TV. There were licensing products that were there. And we saw actually brand started to grow. But what was the next obstacle that we faced? When things were moving really easily, naturally, straightforward, and we were growing this ecosystem, when we realized it, we said, okay, now let's find the, say, the, in all the ingredients, let's find the, the instructions how to make it even bigger. And we start to overthink. We start to analyze and dissecting things. We want it actually, and I was explaining how we learned to drive. We wanted to combine all those data points together. What we were doing here is like, let's dissect them. Let's put them, pull them together and let's try to combine them back. And you know what happened? When putting all those pieces that were individually working really well. So, okay, we need that channel. We need that type of character in that and that things together. When we release that app, actually it feels like a Frankenstein. It didn't simply work into the ecosystem because it was, it felt a little bit awkward. Um, what was the solution for that? Let's go back to the drawing desk. Um, and let's start asking our, ourselves the most important question, at least in our case, in our company, uh, which is why we are doing this and what do we want to achieve? The next thing that we started to do is, are the solutions that are out there on the markets, are the solutions that competitors are using the right ones uh, that we can use, that we can implement in our system? So we start killing the assumptions. Um, most probably you know what assumption means. It's making S out of you and me. What we are doing here is actually, let's have a proven track record that something is actually working for us. So we started to focus back to the users what they are looking, what are their needs, and even more important, what kind of problem we are solving for the users. Is this they cannot came across our apps? Are they stuck in one app and they are not aware that there is actually my talking Tom, that complementary app is then talking Tom Goldrun. So we start again building the system. 
And 10 years ago, when actually no one was using that heavily YouTube, we, we saw actually this is a good channel where we can start bringing the awareness. It's not going to be paid out, but it's going to be paid out as an investment into the entire ecosystem because we will get more users in and we will keep them into the system. So we, we didn't just put gameplay videos, trailers, um, CGI, high poly uh, videos that are representing the games, but we were selling out, let's create animated series where all characters are living together. Next thing, what kind of personality is Tom? Tom is like a gang leader and gang leaders are usually doing some crazy stuff and have some crazy ideas. So let's create talking Tom uh, brain farts. Uh, then the next thing, moving out, maybe it makes sense to create, I don't know, uh, theme parks. Yeah, it makes sense. Let's try to find the good complementary products where we can put on our uh, brand on. Yes, it works together. Then going into the some really old fashioned traditional uh, marketing channels like classical TV ads. No one was actually using them that heavily. Um, we said, okay, but we are broad. We are creating games that are there for everyone, for parents, for grandmas, for kids, uh, families together. Um, even the cool guys there in the high school, they can use Tom and make crazy things out of it. So maybe they are not just aware of it. Let's try with TV ads. We tried in a small scale, we saw that it's actually working, and then we adjusted that channel. Um, in the last few years, there is a lot of talking about the influencers. Should we use them or not? Yes, it makes sense to use them, but just in specific channels, specific geos, and we want to select them based on, let's say, our culture, what we want to represent. We, cannot, we don't want to use the, the ones that are really big, but we want to use the ones that are really fitting into the our system. And with that, what I can say is that last year we had the feeling that we already achieved the perfection. Why I'm saying this? Because we have really three huge successful releases in a row. First one was my Talking Tom 2, then Talking Tom Hero Dash. The last one last year was Talking Tom Friends. What we did there is actually most probably you saw this game because it was most downloaded app in the second half of 2020. Um, we combined all the knowledge from the previous apps together. So the entire gang is actually living in one app and we are actually packing it like that. But what is the cool thing there? We were not talking about let's create the app and actually product came with that solution, but we are working pro with product since the beginning because we saw what are the requirements on the market, what users are looking for, what they actually want and pack it together with the product solution that we have. Um, we are also thinking how to keep the users into the ecosystem. It's not enough that you are just buying them out there or trying to uh, bring the awareness for, with the top of the final activities. Why don't use our internal cross promo system? So when the user is, let's say, stuck with one app and he doesn't want to play it anymore or he doesn't see any progression, okay, there is another app that you can combine it together. So I already mentioned my talking Tom. What is my talking Tom doing when he wants to go crazy? He went running. What is the next thing, next thing after collecting the gold bars? Yeah, he wants to be a hero. He wants to be he wants to play a hero dash thingy. So we have three apps in a row when users user is just migrating into the same ecosystem. And as I said, we thought that we achieved the perfection. And what happened next? So why don't replicate all the knowledge that we have from this um, Talking Tom and Friends brand and bring something new on the market? So let's start focusing on the creation of the new IP. And our product, senior VP of product came to me and said, hey, we have a crazy idea to create a new game. And you know what the game is going to be? I said, I have no idea. And this is actually the final name that we have here, but you know how he described uh, the app to me and I wrote it down. So he said, it's going to be the adaptation of auto chess inspired battles to the mobile asynchronous multiplayer, massive armies, anxiety free game, progression based system. I have no idea what he was actually meaning with this 
fancy, crazy words. Uh, but I played uh, a joker and say, um, yes, great, great idea. And he said, but Yane, are you sure that you know how we are going to sell the game? I said, yeah, man, we did with Talking Tom and Friends, we will do it also here. But in reality, what was happening in my head was like, oh, I don't have any idea how we'll do it, uh, especially because I don't even understand what the game is going to be about. And uh, the feeling that I had at that time, and most probably you saw these kind of guys out there, not just with motorbike, you maybe saw them on the uh, ski slopes. These are the guys that are sitting there with the best equipment that, it's, that you can, they can actually find out there on the market. And they are just posing there. I'm a cool guy. I have all the tools. I have the, all the equipment, but I have no idea how to use it. And this was exactly what was happening with us at that point. And uh, what was the solution for that? Um, we actually admit that we don't know anything. We light back and start thinking what to do. Um, it was like stop, reflect, reassemble, focus on the right things. And when we start focusing and questioning ourselves how to do it, how to do the best approach, we actually didn't focus just on this game. The first question that we had was, hey, do we have actually um, right now the good ground on the company level to start with the new IP? And what we find out is was that we don't have it because Talking Tom and Friends as a, such a strong brand is actually on one side a bless, but on the other side also a curse because no one knows that Outfit7 is the company behind Talking Tom and Friends. And if you want to release the game, we first thing that we need to do was like, let's have a clean cut between Talking Tom and Friends, Outfit7 as a mother company, and then the new IP, in this case, Mythic Legends. So we needed to make clear distinction because those, between those relations, we wanted to create the house of brands. Then the second question was, is the publishing account that we are using the right one or we should create the new one? And the answer was, after a few tests, we need to have the new one. You know why? Because the talking Tom and friends, they are so strong. Uh, and if we will put Mythic Legends, which is more niche, more complex game with different audience um, in the same packet, users that we want to install it, they saw that, okay, but there is Mythic Legends and here you can find my talking Angela, my talking Tom, my talking Ben, but uh, I don't want to be, to play the game that it's really correlated with those games. So again, we need to do the cut. Um, the next thing, uh, I explain you how the product explain the game to us. Do the product actually knows what kind of players they want to get in? And can we help them to actually get those users in because based on those core users, they can optimize also the game. So our focus was shifted from let's create the global release to the let's help the product to make the right game for the audience that you want to get in. And the fourth thing that we thought about it and we said, okay, we need to focus that is we shouldn't forget what we learned with Talking Tom and Friends, but can we build on top of that? And yes, for sure, we can build on top of that. What were the main learning points is if we would go niche, so focusing just on card battlers, auto chess players, um, competing with them, at least for us, it was like smashing with the head directly into the wall. Uh, we cannot compete against them. But what we know is actually how to attract huge amount of users in. And this is really important. If you can convert them really easily and on a huge scale, uh, I would rather have 1 million installs and out of them, 10% of them core users instead of just getting 10,000 of core players into the game. And this was like getting know what you are, what you know and how to integrate, implement those learnings into the new IP. Um, I will go back to the driving. I'm really into the dirt bikes, uh, hard enduro and that kind of things. And I decided maybe this is the middle age crisis. I want to try also trial bikes. So these are the bikes uh, that when you are jumping on the rocks and going up really crazy. And for me, it was like, hey, I know how to drive it. Um, so I know how to drive the bike. I will just buy that bike and I will go. And when the bike came into my house it was like, 
Oh man, where's the seats? What's with these wheels? Um, where is the tank actually? How to do it? Yeah, there is a, there are wheels, there is a clutch, there is a throttle, but this is everything that is similar to my previous bike. And this is completely new stuff. And I could say at that time, uh, I would just go riding. The thing that I did was like, okay, Yerne, stop. Uh, this is the bike, you know how to ride it. So those process that you need to learn so how to open it, and no, 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 no need it anymore, but you want to know how to jump. So I was starting focusing on that. And at the end, I made it. So what is my takeaway here is accept and admit that you don't know everything, but be eager to learn and start building on the, your previous knowledge. You have a ground. So think about that ground and start jumping on top of it. And what was working for us, it's not a takeaway, but it's like our solution and our approach. Um, first question yourself, why you are needed and what do you want to achieve? Next thing is always focus on the user. Um, not just giving them, hey, here is the app and think about huge campaigns, but actually what kind of problem you are solving for the user and try to translate those complex product words into the simple ones from those asynchronous play, uh, massive, uh, anxiety-free game, uh, immersive armies. Our message to the user for the Mythic Legends is really simple. Are you ready to accept the challenge? Go and enter the arena. And those words are saying actually everything and they are working really well. Um, be part of the creation of the game from the scratch. Don't look at your job as a, this is my garden, I need to execute the distribution. No, you are actually there in the idealization phase. So phase minus one. Um, always accept the challenge and build on your strengths. And one thing that I'm always carrying with me, um, it's this. So I don't know if you see it, but you see it also on the screen. Um, play a wild card. You can do a lot of tests. You can do dissecting, analyzing everything. At the end, you need to trust your instinct. Simply put your balls on the table and go and believe in what you are doing and you will do a crazy stuff. And that's it. Balls on the table and playing cards. Thanks. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, really, really fascinating talk. And we've got quite a lot of questions, which is always lovely. So I'm going to, if it's okay with you, uh, dive in and start grabbing some of the questions. Um, so first up we've got, are most of the success stories um, out there based on being in the right place at the right time, or is there a recipe we can follow? <laughs> I believe that at the end, a uh, huge part of the success is this. So being at the right place at the right time. Uh, but fact is also, uh, because this is giving you a good starting point. Um, why we are so successful. And if you check what, who are the biggest companies out there, they were the one, the first ones out there on the market when everything was growing. Because you grab the biggest market share and you start building it out. But there are really successful stories also out there right now, happening actually right now. So you need to find something that is really unique and um, present it, present this uniqueness to the users. Don't just follow others. As I said, it, uh, the solution that someone else is using um, can give you a good insight, but cannot be simply like copy pasted and just labeled uh, on top of your product. Um, so I believe that there is still a room for it. And we are also yeah. right now in this red ocean, uh, searching for that solution. And I believe that we will find it in our own way. Fantastic. Um, I'm just going to pick some in different orders, but um, yeah, that's a good question. When defining the right choices for IP and brand, how do you deal with mistakes? Uh, uh, how to deal with mistakes? We learn from mistakes and we did many mistakes in the past. That's, that's the fact. Um, we, we are admitting it all the time. As I said, it, having a strong IP is actually a bless and a curse. Bless is yeah. because you, whatever you will do, again, it's giving you a good start, but you can do completely wrong things. If you don't understand the audience, um, in our case, we were actually thinking 
really simply, uh, we have quite a huge amount of female users in our ecosystem. So in Angela, it's also a female character. So let's combine the match-free games because it's more in a purchase-oriented game and let's put Angela on top of it. And that's not enough. Users are searching for something new. So let's create a completely new mechanics for the match-free. And we wanted to glue it together. The result was nothing was working. But um, what is the good point? When you see those things, at least in our case, kill them. Don't leave them there to be part of your ecosystem because it's going to skew your entire environment that you are building as a brand. Yeah. Um, the next question is, um, which I think is interesting because it's obviously it'd be different for different companies, but especially for you, at what point does the marketing team really start to get engaged with the game? Do you feed back any decisions into the game's design or features? Um, from the early start, from the ideation phase, uh, marketing is a part of R&D team, uh, yeah. especially because, and actually the two things, we don't have proper marketing, we are calling it distribution because we don't want that guys are looking at a marketing, those are those cool guys sitting in that floor. This is usually the correlation when it comes tech people versus marketing. So we are talking distribution. Distribution is really correlated with the product. Um, product uh, marketing or distribution is actually defining for whom we are doing this game and what are the trends out there on the market? Um, what are the things that we need to tackle? And it happened actually last week because we are working also on another new IP game um, when there was a complete, not complete, but there was mismatch between what users, for example, Gen Z is looking at. So what kind of tone of voice and what is the game that is, what the game will bring. And the solution of from product side was completely working technically, but the message that we are sending through was completely vanilla. So again reassemble refocus and we actually marketing distribution fix the direction of the product yeah and uh, uh yeah i'll sneak in one or two more but uh, uh this one's one that obviously is someone asking for for thoughts and i think it's something we all face in all walks of life so it'd be interesting to get your thoughts um would you define uh, so um they're talking about something you discussed earlier is would you define the feeling you described as imposter syndrome as in how did you deal with the feeling of not knowing what to do at times and when to do it you know um, and this person's asking because they feel like that all the time but still need to sell their idea to publishers and investors so how do you deal with that basically like the unknown element um with testing and testing on small scales um i would say that um we are data supported company, that's a fact. So whatever we are doing, even paid user acquisition, um, we are actually avoiding it as much as possible. And we started with it in 2050 with release with Talking Tom Goldrun. And we created our own model, how we are doing it. But we first needed to prove it actually to the owners, to the stakeholders, because it was paid user acquisition, we don't need it. We have such a strong brand. But when we prove it in a really small scale, uh, on the previous talk, it was how it depends how much money you have and you can invest. In our case, was here you have 30k, prove it that it makes sense, but not prove it in Slovenia or prove it in Cyprus, prove it in the US market. And we actually prove it, and then the pipe was opened. Same goes for TV ads, same goes for influencers. We need to, we want to track it and have the proven track record that something is working for us. Yeah, and I'll, uh, I'll sneak in one last question here. Um, obviously, for everyone else, you can continue the conversation going on areas like Discord. Um, yeah, there we go in the chat. Um, but I think this is, I know this sounds might sound like a simple question, but I think it's a nice question, maybe even to end on to give a lot of people, you know, belief in themselves is like, do I need deep pockets to be able to strengthen my brand? No. Yeah, no. I mean, I'm getting, you know, <laughs> There's, there's, I'm guessing, you know, like you said, there's so many things you can do in order to strengthen your brand that it's not just about money. And I think we've seen that, like, you know, with things like Among Us or, you know, stuff like that. If you think just about money, then this is already the limitation that you put yourself into the head. If <laughs> my case, if I want to jump on the table and if I think that I'm going to fall, for sure, I will fall many times. But at the end, I want to be on the top of that rock. Uh, and it, it should be the same with you. 
uh, you if you believe in your product things will scale for sure i think i think that's a really great great quote there's been quite a few good quotes in in this talk but like i think that's a really great one as well as if you if you limit yourself just by the money then you've already put a limit on what you can achieve and so I, yeah i think that's great well you know thank you so much for a really fascinating talk and for staying with us with the questions it was obviously a super popular talk because we've had so many questions that we just can't get through all of them but that's always a good sign um but yeah thank you so much thanks and have a nice day ciao